Welcome to old faces, not old as in like old, but familiar faces <laughs> and young faces. You, you knew what I was saying, right? Familiar faces is the right term, right? Thank you for visiting us. I know it's been a long trip, but we welcome you again. I do have, yes. I do have a quick update as well. Many of you knew, uh, I think I announced this early in January or February. That I started my application as a reserve chaplain in the Navy. So I'm in! Yay. Woo! Yay. So it's a privilege and an honor to be able to serve those who serve our country, right? And so um, officially in, but there's still a process. I still have to wait my commissioning date and I still have to go to boot camp. Yay! <laughs> right? But yeah, so I, it, it's, it's definitely easier. Right? But anyway, so thank you for your prayers, thank you for your support, and just thank you for your love. And just wanted to share that celebration with you um, and look forward to just amazing opportunities that God's going to bring, right, for us to continue to be um, just the hands and feet of Jesus in this world. We finished our sermon series on 1 Timothy, right? We've encountered some really weird. Uh, text, right? Hard to interpret, hard to misinterpret, right? But we come to the end, and this is the part that I like, right? Because this is the part where you've heard time after time, fight the good fight, right? Fight the good fight of faith. And when I say the word fight, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Huh? Okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Armor, all right. No UFC, no fighting, no boxing, right? Okay. But often, right, it involves some kind of violence, right? We have to think, fight, okay, yeah, I got to beat up someone, or I have to do something, right? Or I have to pick up a weapon or do something. But the idea of fight is different when Timothy is being told to fight the good fight of faith. Here's the thing, right? For me, fight, often the first thing that comes to me is don't give up. Right? When someone tells me fight, that means don't give up. Don't let the enemy win. Right? And you were right. In his time, if you heard the word fight, it often meant warfare. Because that was the context that he was living in. Right? And this, these were empires that were constantly rising, you know, one after another. And you were constantly seeing soldiers, right? And conquest and victories of conquest. Right? So whenever you would hear fight, it would mean army fight. It would mean warfare fight. And these people would actually fight for an empire or for a king or for a cause, and they would give their lives to it. And that's what often just, you know, perplexes me, because you don't know this king. You've never met him, right? You never shook hands, and yet you're willing to go and die for that king or die for that cause. And not just one, thousands, Thousands would run up to the front line and say, yes, for king and country or for king and empire, and they would just lay their lives. Paul is trying to draw that same allegiance, that same passion, that same devotion, and say, fight, but fight for the good fight of faith. Because though you may not know kings and empires and their cause, you do know who's on your side, and that is our Lord Jesus Christ and Savior. So all the more for us to go and give wholeheartedly that fight that Paul calls us to fight. But these earthly kings and these empires and these emperors were not perfect. Soon their greed, right? Soon their mistakes, their pride, their arrogance, and their enemies would reveal their weakness and they would fall. Soon also their mortality would reveal just how fragile they are. Oh, we fought so much for this person, but hey, he died. Okay, next one. And it repeats itself. And this was the context and language that people in Timothy's time knew and lived daily. And this is important because the text that we're going to read today speaks boldly and almost, um, yeah, you're going to read it against them. And it's out of that knowledge and truth that Paul calls for us, not only Timothy, but all of us, to fight the good fight of faith and, of, and to just have that firm grasp of that kingdom that we are living in. Because 
you have to understand, because of God, and he's going to explain who this God is, because of God, we have a chance at this fight, right? Without God, you have no chance in this fight. It's because of God who is on our side, we have a chance. So we fight. So we're going to read the portion in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 13 through 16, and then verse 12, so you understand what he's trying to say. And it reads as follows. It says, I command you in the presence of God who gives life to all things. So when I read this, I want you to think in light of these emperors that were lifted as God, as deity, right? And now he's presenting this other king to Timothy. It says, I command you in the presence of God who gives life to all things and Christ Jesus who made the good confession when testifying before Pontius Pilate. Obey this order without fault or failure until the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ. The timing of his appearance is revealed by God alone, who is the blessed and only master, the king of kings, and the Lord of lords. He alone has immortality and lives in light that no one can come near, no human being has ever seen or is able to see him. Honor and eternal power belong to him. Amen. Because of that, Paul tells Timothy, compete in the good fight of faith. Grab hold of eternal life. You were called to it, and you made a good confession of it in the presence of many witnesses. You have to understand just how powerful and defying this statement is in the midst of rising kings and rising empires when they also governed with intimidation. Nevertheless, Paul presents a king who says he is the king of all kings. He is the Lord of all lords. He is immortal. He gives life to all things, right? Presents a king who said he would come and live amongst us, and he did come and lived amongst us. Presents a king who said he would come and die for us, and he came and died for us. Presents a king who said he would also come back to life for us, and he did come back to life for us. Presents a king who said he would give us victory over this, just as, just as he was con conquered death, and he has given that to us. He presents a king who says he's going to come back. And if he did all that in the past, for sure he's going to do what he promises, right? So that your allegiance should be to this king, Jesus who is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. So fight the good fight. Fight the good fight. Paul declares that all kings and emperors are ultimately at the mercy of this Lord Jesus, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And you have to understand this. Because we hold that truth, because we believe that wholeheartedly, because we are now pledging our allegiance to this king, there will be a fight. There will be a fight because we hold to that truth, meaning we will need to resist. There will be a fight, meaning the truth we believe in will be put to the test. There will be a fight, meaning those who oppose this truth will make it a mission to see us stumble, right? Meaning even our own passions, our own flesh will sometimes test boundaries. So we need to fight, meaning we will need to stand our ground even when we are outnumbered. We need to fight. Therefore, says God's word, fight the good fight of faith. And here's the part where you have to understand. It says the good fight of faith. We can't lose our eternal perspective in this world. We can't lose that. We can't let the temporal things in this world, right, that sometimes keep us awake, blur our eternal vision or weaken our eternal hope or weaken our faith. No, not today. It's the other way around, actually. We let our eternal perspective give clear meaning to our present moment, to our present state. Hence, because of what I hope for in the future, because of the promise I have in the future, I can have joy now, right? Because of what I hope for in the future, because of the promises I know will come in the future, right? I can have peace now because of the future that God has for me. I can persevere. It's kind of like when you ever plan ahead for a vacation. How many of you have done that, right? No? <laughs> Come on, yes, you have, right? You plan ahead. You already bought the plane ticket, right? 
and you know it's coming. And I don't know about you, but when I do that, it's actually a good thing for me. Why? Because there's some hard days where it's like, ah, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. But then I start thinking about what? Oh, but wait, in four months, I get to have this vacation. And so somehow, I know four months, right? <laughs> wait, we're in more April. Okay, three months, I get to have this vacation, right? You get it, right? But somehow, just that idea that one day you're going to rest that one day you're going to have this time off, that one day you're going to forget all about this, somehow does something to you now in the present, right? And that's just a vacation to look forward to. But God says you've got more than a vacation to look forward to. You've got a whole eternal timeline with me in the presence of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Of course, God if that's what awaits for me, yes, I can hang in there a little longer. I can fight a little more. I'll put up a fight. I won't give up yet. So we fight the good fight, right? Second Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18 puts it this way. In another word, it says, So we aren't depressed, but even if our bodies are breaking down on the outside, and some of you know just how frustrating that is, right? The person that we are on the inside is being renewed every day. Our temporary, minor problems are producing an eternal stockpile of glory for us that is beyond all comparison. We don't focus on the things that can be seen, but on things that can't be seen. The things that can be seen don't last, but the things that can't be seen are eternal. Amen? So we fight the good fight of faith, focusing on God who guarantees our hope, who guarantees our faith, who guarantees our victory, who guarantees our salvation. So we fight the good fight of faith, focusing on God who is the King of kings and Lord of lords. Eternal power and glory and honor belong to him. And this same God, here's the part of where it gets better, this same God calls us friends. When was the last time a president or a king or a ruler ever called you a friend? Right? Or knew you by your name. And yet, this king of glory says, I know you by name. John 15, verse 15 says, I don't call you servants any longer because servants don't know what their master is doing. Instead, I call you friends because everything I heard from my father, I have made known to you. There's no secret agenda in the kingdom of God. It's just... Let me show you how much I love you. Right? And so we fight. And we're not necessarily fighting as far as picking up weapons, right? Oh, okay, let's see. What am I good at? A um, sword or a bat or I don't know what you might think of, right? No, the kind of fighting that Paul is talking about doesn't engage with weapon or doesn't engage in violence. It's not that kind of fight. The kind of fight is a kind of training. It's a kind of resistance. It's a kind of uh, holding your ground. It's more about getting in shape, spiritually in shape, right? In the beginning, Paul says this before spurring us to fight the good fight of faith. In 1 Timothy 6, verses 11 through 12, he tells this before he tells them to fight the good fight. He says, but as, as for you, men of God... Run away from all these things. Instead, pursue righteousness, holy living, faithfulness, love, endurance, and gentleness. Compete in the good fight of faith. Grab hold of eternal life. You were called to it, and you made a good confession of it in the presence of many witnesses. He starts by saying, run away from all these things. And you might be wondering, what is he talking about all these things? Well, that's what he tells you before in the, earlier in that chapter. But I can summarize it for you. Paul had just warned the church and Timothy, right, about the dangers of being discontent, about greed, about hatred, about deceit, about harmful passions, about false teachings, about bickering, about temptations, about vices, and the list goes on. And Paul tells Timothy, just run away from all these things. Okay, I'm running away. I want to be as far as away, as far away as I can, right? But if you're running away from something, you've got to be running towards something too. And so he says, 
So now that you're running away from all these things, then pursue this. It says, in other words, get in shape. Go to training on these things. To, to fight the good fight of faith, work on justice, work on godliness, work on faithfulness, work on love, work, work on patience and endurance and gentleness. Work on it. Paul, in a different letter, says in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25, this idea of training, right? Everyone who competes practices self-discipline in everything. The runners do this to get a crown of leaves that shrivel up and die. But we, we do it to receive a crown that never dies. Again, you can't lose your eternal perspective. So you chase after justice, after godliness, after faith, love, endurance, and gentleness daily so you aren't distracted chasing other things that only brings regret down the road, right? Because if you're not fighting, you're most likely losing. If you're not fighting, you're most likely losing. If you're just sitting around, you're most likely losing. God says, no, there's no time for idleness when it comes to spiritual training. You have to fight daily. So when you think of justice and godliness as working, think of it as working on your moral character. Micah chapter 6 verse 8 tells us, right? He has told you, and we sang about this song, oh man, or oh human one, what is good and what the Lord requires from you to do justice, embrace faithful love, and walk humbly with your God. Train on that. When you think of faith and love, it's like, how do I train in faith and love? These are virtues that define who we are as Christians, right? So train on that. And 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 and 8, and then 13 gives us a very good guideline as to how we train in that. And you know this. It says love is patient. Love is kind. It isn't jealous. It doesn't brag. It isn't arrogant. It isn't rude doesn't seek its own advantage. It isn't irritable. It doesn't keep a record of complaints. It isn't happy with injustice, but it is happy with the truth. Love puts up with all things, trusts in all things, hopes for all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Now faith, hope, and love remain. These three things. And the greatest of these is what? Love. Train on that. If you think of endurance and gentleness, think of it as training your self-control or your self-discipline that our actions match our faith. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 reassures us and says, God didn't give us a spirit that is timid, but one that is powerful, loving, and self-control. How many of you have issues with self-control? I hope we all do, all right? If you don't work on it, what happens? Yeah. Yes, right? This, is you, this, this thing that Paul tells us, fight the good fight of faith, it's not when you feel like it. It's not on your good days. It's not on Sundays only, right? No, no. Fight the good fight of faith every single day. Because every single day, you're going to be tested. Whatever you hold true, whatever you hold firmly, whatever you hold it, it, with all your heart, whatever allegiance you have made with God, right, it's going to be tested. Tested by your own passions, tested by those around you, tested by the world, right, tested by enemies, just simply because you are a child of God. So it's not an option. Fight if you have some fight. No, it's fight every day. And here's the part where you have to understand. We fight the good fight of faith, not just standing around, right? Not just consuming. We're not just consumers. We're producers. We produce love. We produce justice. We produce godliness. We produce self-control. We don't join the kingdom of God just to be consumers. And the best part of it all Here's how you finish with this golden ribbon, right? The best part of all, with all this fight, the good fight of faith, is that we don't fight alone. We fight in community. We fight 
in community. Look, look around you, right? Look behind you, look in front of you, right? We're on the same fight, believe it or not. No one here wants to lose. No one here wants to wake up in the morning and say, ah, oh, I'm going to give up today. I'm just going to do, I'm just going to live my worst day today. No. Trust and believe. Everyone <laughs> wants to wake up and they want to say, I want to win today. But it's so hard when you're on your own. It's so hard when you're not plugged into community. And Paul knows that. So when he tells Timothy, he tells the church and he tells us, the best part of fighting the good fight of faith is that not only do we get to do it with God, but we get to do it with you. And I'm glad I can fight the faith with Isaac, with Chris, with Gary, and all those around us, right? It makes it all that better. So let's not give up on one another. Let's not give up on ourselves, right? And let us continue to fight the good fight of faith before us. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for just the encouragement, Lord. We've seen many biblical heroes of faith. When all odds were against them, they didn't give up. They fought the good fight of faith. And the most important part of that is that they had faith. It was because of faith that they were able to do these bold actions and endeavors in their life. So, Father God, whatever decision we have to make regarding tomorrow, whatever decision we have to make even for today, give us faith that we may continue to fight and not give up. You have called each and every one of us. And as Paul reminded Timothy, we all made that confession. When we were baptized, we all said, I am one with Christ. The Lord God is with me. So remind us, Lord God, that you fight for us, but that we have a community that fights with us. And everyone here, we don't like losing. We like winning. So help us how to help each other to win and to fight. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.